the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and the ages of all ages. Amen. Notice here the response to the gospel that we just recited. Many women received honor, right, in the history of mankind. You are exalted more than all of them, for you are the pride of the virgin's mother of God, Mary. So, if you notice the Beatitudes that the Lord Jesus gives in Matthew 5, it says that, you know, he, seeing the multitudes, he went up on a mountain, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, and then he began to list all the Beatitudes, right? Blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed, 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 blessed. St. Mary exceeds everyone, and truly she's the pride of humanity, the pride of the human race, as we say during the, the praises of during Kek, when we say the, the hymn, the, the, the song of the burning bush, we speak about how she's the pride of the human race. We say St. Mary is the pride of the human race for many reasons. Because when you look at these beatitudes that the Lord Jesus gives, it's very rare, other than the Lord Jesus Christ and His perfection, that we see a human being that embodies these beatitudes so perfectly. St. Mary is, it truly has the, is the living example of virtue, of true virtue. Again, notice how all week we've been talking about true peace, true glory, we're talking about true virtue. Virtue is something that is given, of course, from above with the will of the soul that this seeks it. If the, if the soul seeks virtue, the soul can receive and attain virtue. But it comes from above. But there has to be a will in the heart of the person. If you see every one of those, you see St. Mary in her living example. Although we don't hear St. Mary speak much, correct? You know that very well when you read the Gospels. Very few words were spoken by our mother, St. Mary. And yet, in her life and what was witnessed of her by the, the gospel writers, what is witnessed through the church tradition, we see that she embodied these things. If you look at, blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom. Notice how when Elizabeth praised her, as you know, she said right away, my soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. She instantly referred to the fact of her need for salvation. And this is what the poor in spirit should do poor in spirit, what makes them poor in spirit and then become rich in faith is that they realize that without Jesus there is no salvation. So their poverty in spirit makes them rich in faith because their faith is in a person and that person is Jesus Christ. So St. Mary embodies the blessing of the poverty in spirit and that's why the kingdom of heaven is hers. Blessed are those who mourn, they shall be comforted. If anyone can speak of mourning and grief St. Mary tops the list. Because we even saw how at the cross, at the foot of the cross, and she knew very well from earlier on than the moment of the Good Friday, St. Mary knew what was going to happen to her son. Imagine raising her baby boy and taking care of him, watching him grow, knowing that the time will come when he will be killed in front of her own eyes. She knew this from the moment she had him circumcised, didn't she? When... She was told, a sword will pierce your soul also. She knew it. And she kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. She said, my, we've been praying the sixth hour in the liturgy. So, so, you know, let the world rejoice in receiving salvation. But as for me, my inward parts are burning with pain within me. When I behold your crucifixion, which are patiently enduring, for the sake of all my son and my God. She never forgot. She never took it upon herself to say, I'm the mother of God. St. Mary never walked around saying, I'm the mother of God, I'm the holy Theotokos. She always reminds herself, my son and my God, my Lord and my Savior. Blessed are the meek which shall inherit the earth. St. Mary embodies meekness, not only in her kindness to humanity as a mother, she is truly the embodiment of the compassion and the tender heart that bleeds for her children as a mother. We see that in her in her lack of complaint, she kept all things and pondered them in her heart. You yourself saw how when there was no room for them in the inn and she was imminently about to deliver a child, she just trusted that the Lord will take care of it. She trusted in her Lord. She trusted in God. She trusted in the concept of divine incarnation means divine glorification, means divine planning, means everything possible in God. As she even heard from the angel who with God, nothing shall be impossible. Those are hunger and thirst for righteousness. You saw how St. Mary 
constantly reflects what it means to be righteous and not to settle for less than the righteousness of Christ. That's why, again, every time she referred to anything of righteousness, it was back to her son and her God, to the Lord. The Lord has done great things for me, and holy is His name. If you take the time to go and read Luke chapter 1 and see St. Mary's words, after my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, the Magnificat, you see for yourself the embodiment of the heart that seeks and searches for righteousness and not fake righteousness, not vain righteousness, not an appearance of righteousness, but the righteousness that only comes from Christ. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. St. Mary, as you saw very well in the wedding of Cana, as you see in many places throughout Scripture, as you hear from what you've learned from the church tradition, St. Mary is the mother of mercy and compassion. We even say so in the third hour, right, the litanies, whenever we stand in your holy sanctuary, we are indeed considered as those who abide in heaven. O Mother of God, you are the gate of salvation. Open for us the door of mercy. St. Mary intercedes upon us, intercedes for us 24-7. She intercedes with the human race nonstop. And you know that she's appeared throughout history in Egypt, in um, to, uh, or the children of Fatima. She, she appeared, and her appearances are appearances of mercy. Appearances of comfort, appearances of hope. Many people have witnessed these things who haven't spoken of them, but have seen them. Blessed are the pure in heart. What is purity in heart? It's not just pure from the um, lust of the flesh and the pride of life and the lust of the eyes and all these things, but the pure in heart is a soul that can forgive, the soul that can seek salvation for others. This is the pure in heart. A soul that cannot, that can withhold or not withhold, let go of grudges. This is the pure in heart. St. Mary saw what they did to her son and she intercedes nonetheless for the human race. This is the pure in heart. St. Paul tells us, pursue holiness and righteousness or purity of heart without which no one shall see the Lord. You're not going to see God without it. If you don't pursue it like a hot pursuit, like a heat-seeking missile pursuing a target, you cannot see God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. St. Mary is, of course, the ambassador of a peacemaker who accepted everything she had to accept for the divine incarnation to happen, and through her came our peace, correct? Through her acceptance of everything she had to go through, as a young virgin and as a mother, till her death, she brought peace to the world. That's why she's known as Our Lady of Peace. There are churches named Our Lady of Peace. <coughs> Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom. Was St. Mary not persecuted for righteousness' sake? Even St. Joseph, had it not been for the dream, he was a good and just man. And he didn't want to make a public spectacle of her. So when he found out that she was with child, he was about to send her away because he was a good, meek, just man. The dream of the angel told him, don't be afraid to take her as your wife. For he who is in her is of the Holy Spirit. This is a divine conception and a divine incarnation. So she was persecuted. She, there would have been all kinds of accusations that she must have gone through being a pregnant virgin who was only betrothed to this old man who was not yet married to so she went through all kinds of things. Poverty, right? So she was poor in spirit, knowing the need for salvation, but also poor materialistically as well. She endured all kinds of things for righteousness' sake. She is blessed because she was reviled and persecuted. When everything her son went through, she went through. When she saw her son being spat upon and beaten and mocked and misjudged, wasn't this happening to her? I mean, think of you who are mothers. If something happens to your child, whether verbally, psychologically, physically, you feel like it's happening to your flesh. This is, this is the divine motherhood given to you by God. She endured all things. She had to deliver her son, who she knew is the son of God, in a stinky, filthy manger. This is persecution. This is reviling when no innkeeper would be willing to welcome her in, to give her even 
a small room under the steps to deliver this baby. So St. Mary embodies all these things. She, she, of course, rejoices. That's why when Archangel Gabriel came to her with the divine proclamation of our Lord's incarnation, he told her, what, rejoice, highly favored one. Right? This is the first word Archangel Gabriel tells her. Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. You are full of grace. That's why verse 12, again, directs us back to our mother, St. Mary. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. Great is your reward in heaven. How great is St. Mary's reward in heaven? Can you imagine? I mean, you chanted, O Mary, and all the beautiful words and virtues and qualities that were given, inspired in this beautiful church hymn, church song, to, to show you the reward that awaits St. Mary. And it awaits her children. If, you, if there's anyone you want to imitate, it's St. Mary. If there's anyone you want to imitate, every time you pray this gospel, Matthew chapter 5, verse 1 to 16, you pray it in the sixth hour every day, whether you're in the liturgy or at home in your prayers. Every time you pray it, go through verse 1 to 16 and remind yourself of St. Mary and see how she's a good mother. And a good mother does what? She teaches her children. So she's very willing to teach us. If we're willing to listen and ask, she will teach us. She will show us and she will inspire us in various ways as we continue our sojourn in this life. Through her prayers and intercessions, may God have mercy on us all and glory be to him and his church now and ever. Unto the ages of all ages, amen. Our Lord make us worthy to pray.